Hello, the AV here, and welcome to my review of the Silverstone PF120 ARGB all-in-one liquid cooler from Silverstone. Silverstone did send this over to me, so that's a disclaimer on that, and this style of review is very different to one I would normally do. Normally, I'm just behind a microphone and there's a lot of B-roll, and you'll see me at the start and the end, but I'm going to be doing a bit more of a quick-fire one so I can get off this and onto a lot of the new products that are coming out this year in the first half, at least, of 2020. Uh, if you're on my Discord, if you're on Patreon and supporting the channel, you'll be on the Patreon Discord, and you'll see all the random conversations I've had about that over the last day or two. So with regards to this cooler, we're first going to go over the assembly, then some material stuff, and then we'll get straight into the performance. And hopefully I can wrap this up under, under 15 minutes if possible. As usual, Amazon affiliate links in the video description if you want to pick this up and it will give a small kickback to the channel. So first things first, assembly wise, there is a back plate. The back plate is pretty much the same as the other AIOs they have. Uh, it has multiple options. And unlike something like a Silverstone back plate, the Secu Firm or Secu Firm back plate, you have to sort of build the posts you, you want yourself into the position you'd like. Uh, it's relatively straightforward, but it is more fiddly than other back plates and on other coolers. Uh, but I do find it's not overall that much of an issue and it does add for variability with the AM4 and LGA positions or holes on the back plate for all the different sockets that it supports which is pretty much every modern LDA, LGA socket and the AM4 socket. So that's that. In terms of ARGB control, this is an ARGB fan that you get with the cooler and it has a small box which I think a lot of companies now are adding in. It has a mode button and a plus or minus. Now it, it offers various amounts of uh, different lighting functions but in all honesty I actually feel that there could be some more um, of, to offer here. Of course you can plug it directly into your motherboard and since it's an ARGB um, LED fan then you can control it however you like on that. But uh, for the mode button switch thing, which you plug into a SATA power connector, I, I would like to see maybe some more effects, perhaps. Um, but again, it's not a huge deal. And most computers these days, if you're building new at least, and you have an ARGB uh, motherboard header, you'll be able to get a lot more control that way. And if you're into RGB, that's probably where you'd want to go anyway. On to materials. Now, I do have uh, a number of radiators that I have used in the past here and there, and I wanted to work out, okay, what materials are they using and what materials is this Silverstone radiator using? So, with the blunt end of a hex wrench, uh, I scraped away some of the finish of both the fins and the channels uh, for both these radiators. Now, the radiator on the Silverstone PF120, it's, well, to put it bluntly, it's all aluminium. Everything on it is aluminium, and I did check on the website and and they're not they're not you know faking anything they're not trying to uh, swing one past you uh, if that's a term they're, they're just open and honest and they say it's it's all aluminium now one thing when it comes to a more premium radiator which you'd get in sorry for that noise which you'd get in say a custom uh, loop water cooling block uh, it's pretty much a combination of brass and copper for all the bits which the water is going to get into contact with and then it's like an aluminium frame or steel depending on what you've got. As for this radiator, the EK 120mm radiator, I the Coolstream SE, there we go, that's the name. I don't really keep note of names of lots of products, I just generally get them and review them. Uh, somebody had a go at me actually for one of my previous uh, small form factor cooler reviews saying that he wouldn't trust a, a, radio, a person who couldn't read the box and then I told him to go, you know, eat his hat or whatever the term is, uh, because I don't care what the box says, I actually care what the product's like. Anyway, let's move on to this, uh, move on to this quickly. So what it looks like when you scratch away the surface of the, the uh, channels on this is that it's silvery, but that's apparently a byproduct of it being 90% copper and 10% zinc, which is brass. Uh, it looks like aluminium, but it is actually brass, and they do say it's copper, and then say 90% copper, which, which means it's brass just to put that out there. It is brass, it's not copper, it's a combination of materials. And I'm gonna assume that's for one cost savings, but zinc add a, adds a little bit of rigidity to it, um, to the material apparently. It makes it tougher somehow, I guess. Uh, and copper, I guess, is not as tough, but has better heat dissipation qualities. So yeah, but if you've looked half into anything to do with cooling for PCs and stuff, you'll know copper has a better heat transfer coefficient, I believe, than aluminium, so you should get better performance. And, and I'll look into that in a future video at some point. Moving on to performance, which is arguably the most important thing 
thing when it comes to a CPU cooler. It's right in the name, it's got a cool well. But there's another side to the coin, which is acoustic performance. Keeping noise levels down so they don't get annoying or, or perhaps you don't have to ramp the fans up into crazy levels to compensate for uh, the performance of a, a better cooler, uh, as it were, since you have a worse cooler, as it were. So we'll get into first the setups, which I use for doing testing. I have an acoustic setup, which you'll see the graph pop up now. Uh, you'll see there's several bars. So we have at the top of the lighter bar, that's RPM, uh, fan RPM. Then at the sort of mid orange bar, you've got a uh, fan speed in percentage, and then you have uh, cooler height in the darker bar. So you can see at the top the, the side Mugen 5, it's an air cooler. I should put an asterisk for the water coolers, which I will do at some point. Uh, but yeah, so that's the air cooler. It's large, it's 155 millimeters tall. And the Silverstone PF120 is 120 millimeters wide, radiator wise. So that's 120 on the height. And then an Octua NHD9L, which I have gone on a test bench now, which I wanted to add to this. So I tested it just for this, uh, is 120 millimeters high. Although they state it's 100. 10 millimeters the fan does not sit where they where they say it will sit uh, I fiddled around with that for ages during the view of that which you can check out maybe there if I have a card for that um, and yeah it doesn't sit where it's supposed to sit so 120 millimeters it is not 110 and then the L9i is just legacy from when I was testing MX4 so that's that. So a bit of an analysis of all of this, since we've introduced them, I will introduce them again. Uh, you can see that to hit 36.5 dBA, which is the target that I spin the fans up to, so I increase the fan speed of each of these coolers up until it creates 36.5 dBA, measured at 40 centimeters away at an angle of 45 degrees uh, off, the, uh, off from the face of the fan just so there's none of that sort of turbulence of the air creating extra noise and buffeting against the microphone of the sound level meter, which is this. And I did a video on those if you want to check that out. I probably won't put a card. But yeah, so that's measured in that way. Uh, so we can see that for the Scythe Mugen 5, it's ramping its fan speed up to 75%, which is 1100 RPM. It tops out at about 1200 or so RPM. So it's pretty much giving all it's got, but it it does hit the same sound as the rest of them or the noise level as the rest of them. But you can see the Silverstone PF120 on the other hand spins up to 45% of its speed which is about uh, 1,190 RPM or 1,200 RPM uh, as I've noticed here and the Noctua NHD9L is around 1,500, 1,600 RPM at 75% of its fan speed. So what we can tell from this is that that things are going to get a lot noisier for the Silverstone PF120. It's just obvious. If it's making the same noise as all the other ones when they're pretty much sort of topping their speeds, uh, then you're going to be getting a lot more noise when you ramp it up to 100. And the L9i we pretty much won't speak of because it's kind of irrelevant. Uh, compared to the rest of the coolers we've got. So moving on to the stock full speed test, just the, the setup and we'll get into the three different tests I've run through uh, in a second. Uh, the middle bar, the mid orange bar has been replaced from the percentage of fan speed now to the sound level at 40 centimeters at that angle, which I expressed before. I will do a video on all of my testing methodology at some point in the future, but we'll get onto this at another date. But anyway, we can see that the sound level when running all the fans at full speed is dramatically higher on the PF120. It doesn't look a lot higher because I've had to because I've got lots of different bars going on at the same time. It's a bit of a mess. But remember the acoustic layer sound level meter testing was at 36.5 dBA and maxing out on the Scythe Mugen 5 and the Noctua NHD9L, they're below 40 decibels and the uh, PF120 is heading towards 50. And that is a massive distinction between the two. This is just coming from one fan as well. So you know bear that in mind. Of course when you have it inside a case it'll be a bit quieter but comparatively it is what it is. So let's move on to some actual results. First result is the acoustic testing of Prime 95. It's version 26.6, uh, small FTS test. Uh, the reason it's that version specifically is because it's not as brutal uh, as the newer ones are. It's still pretty brutal. It will pin the, uh, the CPU up to 100% load, but I think it just uses a little bit less cache. I think the newer ones are designed for higher cache CPUs or something like that, where it's not just flooding it that hard, I guess. I don't know, somebody will be able to better explain in the comments if they know. Anyway, moving on to the actual test results. We can see the Silverstone PF120 is doing a decent job. It's actually performing better than the really well known to perform or really well performing Noctua NHD9L. Now, just to express, just to put a point here before we go any further, 
price wise we're looking at about 60 pounds and i'll put the the regional equivalents up on the side there or at least um dollars and euros up there so pounds dollars and euros 60 pounds for the nh or for the pf 120 sorry the silverstone uh, aio with an argb fan that has a certain factor to come into this but the mugen 5 and the nhd 9l are around 45 pounds or your regional equivalents so there's there's clearly a, a, some sort of you'll you'll have to do the mental maths as to whether it's worth it. You get ARGB, you get a controller, but you can also plug it into your motherboard. So yeah, ARGB fans can be pricey, but again, it's it's up to you whether you want to you know say swing for one of the other coolers and get some sort of ARGB fan into that or something. And there's plenty of other coolers around, of course. So going into this, then uh, the Silverstone PF120 is performing a little bit better than the NHD9L, and I am surprised by that. The NHD9L performs really well, and it's actually really close to a lot of really big coolers. So that's you know something to bear in mind the side view 5 is 10 degrees cooler than the nhd 9l and the silverstone pf120 is closer to the nhd 9l than the side view 5 so obviously a, a, a large air cooler uh, is you know clearly performing better than a small aio which is not really much of a surprise to anyone the l9 i didn't finish this test because the fan wasn't spinning fast enough moving on to the stock full speed version of the prime t5 test uh, the side view 5 it's doing a little bit better, not that much better. It's about a degree better than it was before. The uh, Silverstone PF120 has maxing that fan speed from 45% up to 100% has given it a huge boost in, in thermal performance. And there wasn't much fan speed difference for the D9L, so it didn't get that much more performance uh, improvement over the acoustic test where it was running at nearly full speed, 75% um, percent for speed um, compared to the 100% it is now. So there we go. Oh, and the L9i did manage to finish this test. And if I just want to express here, we're talking Delta T stats uh, figures down at the bottom. You can see there's a little key there. It's Delta T. So if you add about 20 odd degrees, uh, 21 to 24 degrees to each of them, you'll get a, a rough idea of what the true temperature was. Uh, Delta T being the ambient temperature removed from the temperature that the sensor is reading um, on the CPU or on the motherboard at least. So moving on to the next test, which is the acoustic version of the Cinebench R20. Test. Uh, the Sidegun 5 is basically performing as well as it did in the acoustic test for Prime 95, so there's not really much to say there. And the same trickles down to the PF120 and the uh, LD9L and the L9 I won't discuss. Moving the fans up to full speed then, so from 45 up to 100 for the uh, for the PF120 Silverstone AIO, and from about 75 to 100 for the Mugen 5 and the D9L. There's a much better improvement than the other ones for the uh, PF120. It's really close to the size Mugen 5, which is quite surprising, but remember, we are spinning that fan at full speed up to nearly 2200 rpm so to bear that in mind the other coolers uh the mugen 5 is at about 1200 rpm and at about about 2000 rpm for the d9l so that huge spike in speed is making a lot of noise again like we saw earlier 45 decibels to below 40 for the others at the specific measure it's not really worth it it's a lot of noise so there we go and the uh, minimal improvement for the d9l in this cinebench test Moving on then to the uh, the Hitman acoustic test, uh, it's pretty much the same as usual. Because there's less load on the CPU, it's more of a GPU application. Um, GPU is pinned at 50% speed throughout all the tests, by the way, just to say that. It's not included for the acoustic test, the, the readings. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much a, a, a copy of the other ones, only at lower temperatures, so the, the readings are tighter together. It's just how things go. When you get to the, ex the, the lesser extremes of things, then everything seems to, I don't know, equalize together somewhat, so, or normalize somebody will know the best term then spinning up the fans to full speed gives us basically a, a, another readout of what we we're doing before so one thing i want to express then is going back to the price thing it's 60 pounds or your regional equivalent uh, for this the mugen 5 is about 45 and so is the d9l now, performance-wise, you get more performance out of the Mugen 5. You probably could fit the Mugen 5 into most cases this can just due to the offset of the uh, of the uh, rear fan position, the 120mm fan position of most cases due to the I.O. at the back. You've got about, say, 20 to 30 mil offset uh, of that fan space. So, you know, you add 120, add 20, 30 mil to, to the 120 and you've got yourself 140 to 150. I didn't say 150 to 160. That would be silly. So, so yeah, you're, you're pretty much in the ballpark of, of 
pretty much being there. So a slightly larger case maybe you would need, but in quite a lot of cases, it'll be very close to get a cooler as large as the uh, Mugen 5, which is on the shelf there, hence why I'm pointing there, uh, on there. So it's, it's a little bit tricky to say that this is going to cram into pretty much every other case, but this can fit into a lot of smaller compact rigs where you just can't get something as big as a Mugen 5 in there. But it is also a little bit more expensive, uh, about 15 quid for me, and again, they're more expensive, uh, but you do get RGB. So it's kind of up to you really if you want to sacrifice a bit of performance if you could fit it in your case for that RGB factor. And unfortunately, a lot of jump cuts there, that does have a price. You can't just throw an RGB fan on when you would put, put like a standard fan in place uh, and just expect the cost to be exactly the same. So do AIOs have a place? Well, yes, they do. I mean, they have several benefits, uh, mounting options and mounting security. The lot, there's less weight uh, further away from the socket, so that's a little bit secure there. You've got four four mounting positions on the AIO itself, and then you've got another four for the cooler. And yeah, you're spreading the weight around, and it's a little bit more secure. Uh, so for transportation reasons, that might be a good. They can fit into some cases, which other ones, which larger coolers can't. And yeah, they objectively or subjectively, sorry, look good depending on your point of view. That's pretty much all I've got to say on that. It's not exactly a glowing review. It's pretty much down to earth, I guess, which I you know, hope every review of mine is. And that's my best of intentions that I try to make it. If you did want to pick this up, again, it's in the Amazon affiliate links uh, in the video description. It's the in the video description, there are Amazon affiliate links. You can check out, click on those. It takes you through to the Amazon pages for your various region. And if you pick it up, it does give a small kickback to the channel. Uh, I have got anybody who's into review stuff, you can go now if you don't want review stuff. I'm just going to talk channel for a second. I have been doing a rather extensive amount of planning. If you're on the Patreon Discord, then you'll have have been party to the conversations or at least witnessing the conversations as they flow by and you'll have the rough idea or pretty much outlined the idea of what I want to be reviewing uh, for the next um, half of the year. In fact, I think it might be useful for some of you guys who are interested in checking out future reviews because it's the end of the video. Uh, there, here's a list of what I'm looking to review at what kind of dates. Now, none of them are really solidified in their position because Half of them I don't know exactly when they're coming out. I thought the Sugo SG14 was going to be kind of Q, maybe Q1, late Q1. I think it's looking more at the half year mark. So that's going to have to change positions. And I'm also going to need to potentially shift some other things around to make sure uh, I fill up the gaps where I need to and I'm not wasting time just sitting around because I didn't plan things. But that's the rough idea of what I'm going to be reviewing in the first half of the year. If you have any suggestions, you want to see anything different, please let me know. Other than that, I'm going to leave it there because waffling is my nature and I need to stop the habit. So I'll cut it off there. Thank you so much for checking this video out. Thanks for your support. If you do want to support me even further, you can check out the Patreon, which I'm going to put probably there because I'm slightly over this side. So I'm going to use the flip version of the, uh, of the ending, ending screen, which makes no difference to you guys. Check out other videos there. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, of course, it's right up there. Thanks guys. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.